All right, folks, we've done this far too many times for me to over-explain this, but we're rocking Wisconsin Badgers to be in solidarity with the, uh, the Big Ten. I don't know what exactly that means, but it sucks that there's no college football, so I put the hat on. Also, I have two to choose from, and I did CBS Sports last time, so that's it. Very simple process here. This is mock draft number six. I do this once a week. There's one goal that I have this week, and that is no negative comments. It's going to happen anyways, but I feel like, I think we're on six. Mock draft number four, I think, was the best one. Everybody seemed to like it. I didn't get any negative comments, tons of likes. Mock draft number five, I took a couple steps back. I tried a few things, mixed it up a little bit. Not a lot of people liked it, so. Do a mock draft, draft, draft pack number flip, flips, six, number six. And um, what I wanted to do is not be so strict with my board, which I should be doing anyways because it's way too early. And even if it's not, so what? Mix it up. And we want to see some new names and stuff. Um, but I get real strict with it, man. I get all up in my head like, no, nah, that's a reach, man. Why take that guy when this guy's right here and it's like four guys away? Who cares? It's a mock draft. Have a little bit of fun. Um, I don't know what else. Please subscribe to the channel. As I've said, when we get to 2,000, I'm going to go to you and I'm going to have you send in the video. You send in the video for my pick. So you're going to send a video to me that says, with the first pick, the Jaguars select Brow. It's going to be cool, man. It's going to be. I think it's going to be cool, and we're almost there. So please subscribe. Please share it around. Tell your friends. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be an expert. I'm a facilitator. I'm trying to have fun for all of us to come together and figure this out and do some mock drafts. I want to take your input. I want to put it out here for everybody. I'm not a scout. I don't try to pretend to be a scout. I don't care about any of that. I'm a fan, just like you're a fan. And if you think I'm an idiot fan, that's fine. Tell me in the comments. Try to be a little nicer than that, but that's fine. But let's just let's just have a little fun, man. Just let me know what you think. Drop your thoughts below. Otherwise, let's do mock draft number six. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select... Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. Been here probably about six times in a row now. I'm, I, we maybe have done something different once, but until we get the season started, I've said this a thousand times, and the Jaguars are no longer the first pick, this is just going to be the pick. And I haven't seen a single complaint yet. In fact, the only Jaguars comment that I've gotten is from Michael Johnson saying, it's Lawrence or bust for us Jags fans. The Jags fans who think Minshew is our franchise quarterback I have no idea what they're talking about and I've been waiting for the Minshew people to come along and be like no we got a guy I assume there was at least one that was going to comment and if you're out there comment but um I have not had any pushback on this so this is just the pick with the second pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Washington Redskins select Penny Sewell offensive tackle Oregon now right out of the gate I'm going to get trashed right <laughs> I'm going to get ripped up and down but I did have believe it or not a negative comment about everybody picking on Haskins why is everybody ripping Haskins he's a good enough quarterback look I, Justin Fields is probably the right pick here but Penny Sewell is by all accounts a better overall football player we're giving Haskins another opportunity we're going to let him continue to develop and we're going to try to protect him beyond that let's just say that we know Haskins isn't the future anyways. What good is it? And, and and I'm not say I understand we may not get another opportunity at such a good quarterback, but what what good is it to take a quarterback and drop him in this mess behind a bad offensive line with no real weapons outside of obviously Terry McLaurin, who had a great rookie year. We'll see if that continues or if he regresses or whatever. But it's not a very good offensive line outside of guys like Scherf and Roulier who are, you know, how old are these guys? Scherf is, well, he's only 28, and he's only 27, so I don't know what I'm talking about. So they're young enough, but we don't have any tackles. We don't have a left guard. Um, Kelvin Harmon didn't impress all that much. Tight ends, right? I, I'm trying to justify it. We should have taken Justin Fields, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make everybody happy and not any negative comments, so here we go. Let me know what you think. Are we hanging on to Haskins? And, and by the way... If you think this is dumb, the next time somebody jumps in the comment section and says, why is everyone trashing Haskins? Answer the man. Answer him. 
Otherwise, this is what you're getting. You're getting Penny Sewell with the second pick, and you're not getting a quarterback. And yes, the hat is off. With the third overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals are going to accept a trade from the Carolina Panthers. The compensation, I don't care. Just pick something in your mind that makes sense. Part of the reason I'm doing this, by the way, um, number one, Penny Sewell is gone, and so that would have been the pick we really wanted. Number two, I have not had a single comment from a Bengals fan, so if you have a thought, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep trading away your pick, man. <laughs> That's a joke. I'm not really going to do that, but in this case, I will. Um, and with the third pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. One common thread, as I've said, and as much as I think Teddy is a decent enough quarterback, and it does make a lot of sense, right? Even if he's decent, even if he's a really solid sort of game manager, right? He can he can handle, if he's got enough weapons in an offensive line, he can make this thing work. Still, when you come in here and you've got a brand new team and you take this team by, by the, the reins or whatever those things are, um, you want to take it in the direction you want to go in. You want a a new young quarterback that you can mold in your system your way not a guy that's been going through a ton of stuff plus teddy's not going to be a bad coach he's been to a lot of different places he's learned a lot of things so i think i think it makes a lot of sense in this spot with the bengals calling around saying hey we want to move back a little bit um for the panthers to get on the phone and say you know what let's let's make this happen let's go up and get justin fields so that's exactly what they do with the third pick the panthers select justin fields quarterback ohio state with the fourth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. Um, I'm, I'm kind of sticking with what made sense in that in that last mock. Um, there was a comment, and I don't have time to look it up. I'm sorry. I mentioned it last time. But it makes sense if, depending on, on who's available, if we get a little bit further and there's not some top-tier pieces that can help in, in other ways, um, maybe we go wide receiver, but I, I want to get those premier pieces and then look a little bit later at wide receiver. And with Gregory Rousseau here, I think, again, depending on where we're picking, this is probably going to be the pick every time. I mean, Penny Sewell is an option if that's available. Um, you know, quarterback obviously is not one, but I like the idea of doing that and then later checking to see about wide receiver. And there's almost no chance that there's not going to be one available, which is why Jamar Chase is probably not going to be the pick. Again, if Rousseau is gone and, I mean, even then I'd probably go cornerback. So it would have to be we're picking like 10-ish. Rousseau and the corners are gone, um, but then Jamar is probably gone. So it's just there's probably not a lot of opportunity for Jamar to go to the Dolphins as long as I'm employing this strategy. And if you don't like it, let me know. Hey, I want um, I want Jamar Chase more than I want Sean Wade, more than I want Rousseau, more than I want Sertan. Then we can talk about it. But in this case, we're going Gregory Rousseau. We're going to get that edge rush. Um, I'm going to bring the heat. And uh, we're going to see what we can do. A lot of people are a little bit more optimistic than I am. But we'll, we'll see. And um, I do think... If we're going to get anywhere, it's going to be because we start getting some of these cornerstone pieces. So it's a good start. With the fifth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. So Jets, I've, I've got a, a comment on every single one of my last three videos from Jets fans, and you guys are kind of all over the place. I'm getting yelled at because I say you don't really need wide receiver. I'm getting yelled at no matter what I do. So you guys jump in there together and talk this out. But um, I'm kind of going back and forth and just seeing. And um, again, I'm, I'm getting hit on the fact that Jets fans really seem to think that wide receiver is a big need. Now, whether or not it's a massive need, that's kind of where the dis disagreement comes in. Um, I don't think this would be the biggest need, but I will say this. Jamar Chase probably is the best player available at this point. Um, very, very talented wide receiver. It's going to be sort of, as I said last time, you know, if we're doing this, this is this is go time for your quarterback. He's got to be able to prove that this is it. And I, I think this is going to be some great chemistry here. I think Darnold is a talented quarterback. Um, you know, I, I, cerebral, his, his cerebral nature is kind of what, drew a lot of people to him and I think with a guy like Jamar Chase where you can kind of just do whatever you want right short routes um, deep routes 50-50 balls coming from the slot going from out wide I mean you can move him around as a piece anywhere you want 
and it's going to be that sort of a, a, a relief valve for uh, Darnold. I'm getting all my names mixed up here. To be able to really just to, to kind of force it, right? If the offense isn't working, we can force it with Jamar Ch Chase, right? Maybe it's not the greatest call in the world. Maybe the offensive line isn't the greatest in the world. Maybe this... If you have a good enough quarterback and wide receiver combo, and we've seen this in certain situations, even when things aren't working, we can kind of make it work a little bit, right? Because the, the talent level kind of covers up the fact that there's a lot of broken pieces here. So, again, it's it's not my favorite first pick. I would probably rather go cornerback here. And, and again, Jets fans, not only get in the comments and let me know, but check what other Jets fans are saying. You guys figure it out, right? I'll check what you guys come to the conclusion of. But um, again, I, I, I at the very least, I think Jets fans would be happy to get a Jamar Chase level wide receiver. And so we're going to go that route and we'll see what happens. But I'm a little bit nervous about this one. With the sixth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals are going to accept a trade from the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears are going to offer up quite a bit of compensation to move from 16 up to 6. And with the sixth pick, the Chicago Bears select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. So this is this is kind of big. Um, Trey Lance, this is him going a little bit earlier than you would expect. This is the Bears making a bigger jump than you would expect. But after Trey Lance, there's nobody. And Trey is kind of maybe in that, you know, 12 to 15-ish range in terms of value. But taking a guy like that early makes a lot of sense. And the Bears are kind of looking at this saying, it's, it's now or never. Now, we could go other directions. We can wait and see if maybe we can get some offensive line help, maybe get another wide receiver. I mean, I know there's going to be a wide receiver there. Maybe we backfill along the defense because, you know, that's one of those things where it's a very good defense, but you want to try to keep adding so that when guys go away, which is going to happen for everybody, we have somebody there waiting in the wings um, to kind of take over that spot. But it's a weak defensive class. So, you know, it's it's one it's really one of those things where we either pull the trigger right now and we say Trey Lance is our guy and we're gonna go get him at whatever cost, or we sit and wait for a wide receiver and just plug along. I'm going Trey Lance. Bears fans, let me know what you think. Um, is it worth it? Let's just say we gave up a second and a fourth or something. I don't know. It, it, to move from 16 to six, um, would it be worth it to go up and get Trey Lance? I'm, I'm not even so much worried about um, the value. Because the fact of the matter is, the, 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 the question I'm asking is, are we pulling the trigger? Because you can't wait. Like, well, he's, he's, he's more of a, a 12th overall kind of guy, so we'll wait until 12. You ain't going to make it to 12, man. Somebody else is going to move up and pull the trigger. I promise you. Nobody's going to wait until a quarterback is at the right value. They're going to take him early because he's never going to make it to his value. That's why all the most recent quarterbacks, for the most part, you trade up to go get him. It's just what you do in, in today's NFL, in the in the first round anyways. You have to trade up and get them. So, again, let me know what you think, but um, I really think that this is probably the right move for the Bears. I know you got a guy that can that can kind of make it work, but we, we're still within the window. We're still within the window. We still have the defense. We still, so far, have a number one wide receiver. We'll see if we extend him or not. I, I think at this point we kind of have to. Um, it, it feels like... As long as we still have this opportunity, we need to push all in. And if we're picking at 16, that means we were kind of close to the playoffs but didn't quite make it. So let's just let's make this thing happen. With the sixth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Sean Wade, cornerback, Ohio State. Um, common thread among Giants fans that this is a need and no question that it is. I do like the idea of possibly getting a pass rusher if Gregory Rousseau is still around. At this point, obviously, he's not. We could go in a couple different directions. Offensive tackle, but that's not a very good um, value. You could possibly make the case for Jamar Chase, but I think that would be a mistake. It's way too early for tight end. I don't really want to take a linebacker here. We do have... Um, Oh, Micah Parsons is available. So that, that would have been an option. Um, but I do think cornerback is not only probably a bigger need, but um, obviously a better value in terms of, of position, right? Getting a lockdown corner is more important than getting a linebacker. Now, 
in terms of, of the fact that Micah Parsons is an absolute freak, I mean, this has happened in past drafts as well, where I, I constantly say, I don't really want to take a linebacker yet, and people are freaking out about it, like Simmons last year. People did not care. I don't care if he's a linebacker, take him, right? He's a safety linebacker hybrid, he's a game changer, all that. I don't know if maybe Micah Parsons is there. Maybe that's what you would rather do. I know you went out and got Blake Martinez, but, you know, I don't know. Martinez and Conley are kind of on that same level in terms of what you're going to be getting. I mean, Martinez at his best is a decent enough run defender, but um, I don't know. I, I, I guess that would be the one question mark that I would have. Is there anybody out there that would prefer I take Micah Parsons, or are we in agreement that corner is probably the best uh position to take here and I do think that it is but let me know your thoughts with the eighth pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Detroit Lions select Marvin Wilson defensive tackle Florida State now this was kind of tough I didn't really want to go corner because we just got Okuda linebacker I think would probably be arguably the best pick but I just feel like Lions fans would flip out because you went out and got Collins and you drafted Jelani Tavai already, so you know how much do we want to invest in linebacker? The only other spot that I feel like, outside of possibly getting a second edge rusher, um, would be along the defensive line, and I don't mind beefing that up. With Flowers, we've got Danny Shelton, um, but at 345 pounds, he's gonna be a sort of rotational player. Not that he's just a run defender, because he's, he's a solid pass rusher, but again, at 345, he's he, got, he has to come off the field sometime. You can't just have Danny Shelton and a bunch of nobodies, and that's kind of what it is. Somebody mentioned, I think, Deshaun Hand in one of my videos, like, you forgot about Deshaun Hand. No, I didn't. I didn't forget about Deshaun Hand at all. He's not gonna help you with anything. So we got Flowers, who's a very good and I would say underrated pass rusher. I think PFF was putting on Twitter before, you know, the list of uh, win rates, which the guys that beat the guy in front of them most often, and, and Flowers was in like the top five, top four, top three, something like that. So very, very talented, but we're going to get some help. And I know Marvin Wilson looks like a really beefed up kind of guy. Like, well, he's just another Danny Shelton. He's like 305 compared to 345. So he's going to be a little bit more lean. He doesn't look it, but he is a little bit more able to stay on the field in, in more kinds of situations. And it'll be a good compliment to Danny Shelton. So um, I know Buffed Up in the comment section is going to hate whatever I pick now because I made fun of the Lions and he hates me now. But any other Lions fans um, that have an honest opinion of the pick, let me know uh, what you would maybe rather have done. Please keep the context of the players available in mind. You know, you could say I'd rather have a pass rusher, but you got to come with a name because I don't know who would be a good value here. So anyways, that's what we're doing. Let me know what you think. With the ninth overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Cincinnati Bengals are back on the clock after their uh, trade from three to nine. And with the ninth pick, the Bengals select Creed Humphrey, offensive center, Oklahoma. Now there was no question in my mind when I'm trading back, that's what I want to do. I want to get an offensive lineman. Um, tackle obviously would be more important. We do have Jonah Williams. That's probably going to be playing left tackle for us. It wouldn't be the worst thing to have another tackle, but anybody, anybody along this offensive line would be fine. And Humphrey is just, he's one of those guys that usually you want to ta take a tackle over an interior offensive lineman, but Creed Humphrey is sort of that top 10 level talent. Um, as much as you maybe don't want to take a center, as much help as we need, I need a dominant football player that I can plug in there. So we're just going to go Creed Humphrey rather than reaching for an offensive tackle, and we're going to get Burrow some help. I mean, there, there's other directions we can go, but this is disaster territory for a guy like Joe Burrow. I mean, he's got weapons, but this offensive line is putrid. So as much as we could say, well, you know, you can go corner, you can go linebacker, you can get a pass rusher, you can get a safety, you can get all these different things, pretty much any position that you want to get minus maybe running back and quarterback um, or wide receiver, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. It's offensive line all day, every day. And since there wasn't Penny Sewell at three, we're trading back, we're taking the best available offensive lineman at a value that makes sense. And I don't think any other offensive linemen have gone, so we didn't miss out on anybody. So we're just gonna take the best available and that's Creed Humphrey. With the 10th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. So one thing, this this was going to be my first real big opportunity to reach 
just because I want to get somebody that you want. Uh, Deck Train has been all over um, uh, these videos in terms of his comments for the Oakland Earth. <laughs> That's going to happen constantly. The Las Vegas Raiders. And one of the things he said in all caps, Raiders need a long, rangy, tall, ball hawking free safety. And I wanted to go get you that. And then as I was looking at it, I thought, you know what? I think there's a compromise here, and it's not that I necessarily disagree. We've got uh, Jonathan Abram, who we drafted. Obviously, we didn't get to see him very much because he got injured, but as far as that just smash mouth, just hit you right in the head, not that that's a good thing. Also, probably, <laughs> I think that's the reason he got knocked out for the year. But just a violent football player that kind of plays up in the box. But then we got Demarius Randall up top, who hasn't been that terrible. But I again, I understand the need that's who we want to replace. Let's get that sideline to sideline guy. I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, you know, we can help the DB room as a whole by getting somebody who's a much better value in Patrick Sertan out of Alabama. Because as I'm looking at it, I mean, I know we got Trayvon Mullen, who was a second round pick and he was okay. But on the other side, when you go out and get a guy like Prince Amukamura, not a bad football player, but he's not a long-term option. Amukamura is a signal that we need more help and so we're getting a short-term fix. This is your long-term fix. We're going to get somebody that is much better than Mullen and Amukamura, who's going to be able to help our um, pass defense much better than a safety could. And again, I don't disagree with you. And if we can get a, a tall, rangy, ball hawk and safety in the second round, that's something to seriously consider. But in this spot, I can't pass up on Patrick Sertan to reach for a safety. So that's my compromise. I hope it works out for... I hope you accept that <laughs> as as my uh, compromise. But um, again, as always, let me know what you think. With the 11th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. So I, I can understand in the comment section people in general saying Micah's not making it to 10. It just fell that way. I don't know what to tell you. Um... As much as it's weird to take a guy like Creed Humphrey over Micah Parsons, if you're number nine and you're the Bengals, are you taking Micah Parsons or Creed Humphrey? I know some of you would probably take Micah, but I'm not. But anyways, dream scenario for the Denver Broncos. I, I would imagine Vic Fangio is screaming at the top of his lungs, we need to go up and get Micah because we're about to lose him, and I'm about to sneeze. Um, but he fell into their lap at 11, which is just an absolute dream scenario. It's not even necessarily an indictment of the linebackers that you have. It's just a matter of when you're Vic Fangio and you basically have an offense that works outside of, again, I, I'm not I'm not sold on the quarterback, but I think uh, Broncos fans are, so I'm not going to draft a quarterback, plus there isn't one available. It's, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than this is a no-brainer. This is a dream scenario to get a guy like Micah Parsons at 11 for a Vic Fangio defense. End of story. With the 12th pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the LA Chargers select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. What do you want me to say about this? <laughs> Just offensive line is what we're doing. Um, we've got a quarterback. We've got to protect him. We could say we get him some weapons. Again, Chargers fans not super active in the comment section. Uh, I, I guess I would need to probably have more subscribers to... Um, be able to reach the very few Chargers fans that exist. But for the few of you that are out there, if you happen to be watching, jump in the comments section and let me know what you think. In terms of specifically, if we don't take offensive line, which we absolutely should, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we looking for a running back, a wide receiver, not a tight end, but I just, I got nothing, man. It, it's just such a bad situation with the offensive line as it is. You know, again, Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence, Chargers offensive line, and probably Alex Leatherwood if he's available. So it is what it is. There you go. Again. With the 13th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Javon Holland, safety out of Oregon. So this one was fun because it was my it was an opportunity to trade up further than I should have and get away from the board to take a guy that I want. Um, I think Carlos... Basham is is somebody else that I could have traded up and got, but it's something that I haven't done. I think Javon Holland can go early, and spoiler alert, a lot of teams need safeties, and 
we're just going to go get them. But this is where the, the run on safeties begins here with 13 with the Atlanta Falcons. The only real comment I've ever had about the Falcons was from uh, Peter Griffin Gaming saying, hot take, the Falcons do bad again, trade up to take Trey Lance. One of these days, I'm going to make that happen. But it isn't today, um, especially on the uh, don't make anybody mad uh, mock because I think Peter Griffin Gaming is going to make me do something that's going to cause Falcons fans to reach through my computer screen and punch me right in the face for doing that. But I think it'd be fun, and I want to do that one of these times. So be prepared for that. I, I should do a make everybody mad mock, and that's <laughs> that'll be the pick. <laughs> With the 14th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins, via the Houston Texans, select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. So I do like the strategy. It doesn't have to go this way, though, but I, I will add this little, little tidbit. If I'm going to get a defensive player, I want to follow it up with an offensive player because I want to get to a help. Um, there are different ways that we can go about this possibly going offensive line depending on where our first pick is and then following that up with wide receiver or offensive line and then defense i mean we, we can go safety we can go linebacker we can go defensive line we can go pass rush we can go corner we can go tackle we can go guard we could probably even go center and replace Karras. we can go wide receiver uh we could go running back so <laughs> i mean there's there's no shortage of options i'm i'm, just, I'm saying i like this strategy in general but largely it's because of how things fall with wide receivers being very valuable around this this point. Um, but as that, that order shifts, um, we'll probably go in a different direction. It is my favorite pick right now, but again, um, depending on how things fall, we could go corner. This wouldn't have been another spot where a safety might have made sense. Um, but we're going to stick with wide receiver for now, again, mostly based on value and because I want to get to a help. There's no other real offensive lineman that I like in this spot. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go out and get Mr. Jalen Waddle. And again, there's the Alabama connection. With the 15th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Dylan Moses, linebacker, Alabama. A lot of different directions we can go here. I know uh, Dylan Moses probably doesn't excite a lot of people. I'll reiterate, I don't see a lot of help along the offensive line at this particular spot. As much as I'd like to help uh, Minshew out, we do also have to work on this defense a little bit. And, um, you know, we'll see what Chase on brings. This could be a solid pass rush duo with Chase on and Allen. Um, Brian, in, in the middle of that defensive line, has been a pretty solid um, compliments so we could have a really good trio as far as pass rush there but I still think we need a little bit more help um, on the defensive side of the ball I don't know I, I again we could add another wide receiver but do you want that with DJ Chark already being there and we just brought in Eifert which we'll see if he's any good anymore and if he can even uh, maintain it's just, it, I, I didn't feel good about the spot maybe I could have tried to trade away the spot but the problem is, in this spot, whenever anybody tries to trade, the one thing people usually want to trade up for is a wide receiver, and why do I have to when there's about four of them, right? I'm going to wait. I don't need to trade up right now. So it's a bad spot to trade. I don't know. Just just let me know what you think, I guess. I, I didn't know what else to do, and I really, really don't like the linebackers, and we need to upgrade that. So that's what we're doing. With the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals are back on the clock after their trade from 6-16 to 16 with the Chicago Bears. And with that 16th pick, the Cardinals select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. Bottom line, I don't like the offensive line. If we're going to throw the ball like 70% of the time or whatever ridiculous thing that we're going to be doing, and we're going to spread this thing out, and Murray's going to stand in the pocket and just distribute, 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 and maybe the ball's coming out quick so it isn't that big of a deal, I don't like anybody on this offensive line. Uh, DJ Humphreys has not proven a single thing. Justin Pugue is 30 years old and not good. Um, Mason Cole, who is a third-round pick that everybody was excited about, has been bad for two straight years. Sweezy is no good. And we got Josh Jones, who we could try to get excited about if we really believe a third-round pick is going to come in and just dominate. I don't like anybody on this offensive line. So we're not going to be able to run the ball, and we can't protect Kyler Murray. It's not a recipe for success. So as much as an um, offensive guard is a drop in the bucket, um, we are going to reach a little bit. We're going to get the best available offensive player, and we're going to get somebody that's really going to be able to help us out. Now, the, off the problem with the offensive line is you're only as strong as your weakest link, but you got to start somewhere, and we're starting with Wyatt Davis. With the 17th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select... 
Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. I, I've mentioned before I like the Browns roster. I think uh, with Beckham and Landry, if Mayfield can reclaim a little bit of that magic, um, you've got a great running back. I really like your offensive line. You brought in Hooper. The offense is ready to go. So I'm looking at the defense, and you've got Olivier Vernon, who I still think is a pretty talented guy. Miles Garrett, who's one of the best pass rushers in football. You drafted Grant Delpit, so I think he's going to be a massive help, on top of already having Carl Joseph, who maybe isn't exactly what you want in a er, sort of early first-round pick, but he's decent enough. So we've got the safeties. We've got the defensive line-ish, right, especially with Garrett there. The offense is set. So I'm looking at linebacker, which is a massive need, but also – corner i know ward um i mean he I, I i don't know that he's i don't know for a, for a fourth overall pick it's not exactly what you want but e- either way he's going to be a starting corner that's cool outside of that though who do we have i don't really like anybody that we have so now let's let's look at it from the positive perspective we don't have great linebackers whatever we have one of the best pass rushers in football along with a pretty talented overall defensive line we've got a great cornerback duo in Farley and Ward. We've got Delpit and Joseph at safety. We've got one of the better offensive lines in football. We've got two elite wide receivers, a talented young quarterback, and one of the better running backs in football. If this team is not deep into the playoffs, this is a massive failure. I don't see rosters this good. I mean, this is this is like Saints level good. Now, you don't have Drew Brees, but in terms of just, I, I'm struggling to find holes, like this part of your team's terrible, linebacker would be it, especially now that we've got this cornerback duo. So, again, linebacker would be cool, but there's no linebackers available. Uh, we're going to reach on some of those, I think, a little bit later, but for now, it's a pretty easy pick. I mean, it, based on the board, it's a little bit of a reach, but I don't mind this at all. I'm very fine with this. With the 18th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Trey Smith, offensive guard, Tennessee. Now, unlike other places where you'd like to get tackle more than interior, I think this is a great scenario for the Vikings because there aren't tackles, and I'm okay with that because I don't want tackles. We have two tackles that are pretty solid, and we already drafted our replacement tackle to come in and take over at left tackle. Maybe this year, maybe the year after, I don't know, whenever. Um... So we need to help our offensive line, but specifically along the interior, and the best available interior guy is Trey Smith. It's a very important part of what we do. Our quarterback holds onto the ball for a long time, which isn't what we want to happen, but he does. Um, either way, we got to protect him. We've got to protect uh, this passing game, but running the ball is very important for what we do. And so getting a guy like Trey Smith, and we've already drafted an offensive center, Garrett Bradbury, who hopefully is going to take uh, continue to grow. As I've said before, I think he continued to get better as the season went on. And so now with Trey Smith involved in this, um, we're well on our way to having just a really solid offensive line where we don't need to continue to worry about this. We've got a great offensive line. we got the running back. we got the quarterback. we got the wide receivers. I think the emphasis at this point, and, and even now maybe it would be a bigger emphasis, would be to focus on the defense, especially with losing some of the pieces. Um, but, you know, next year we'll get our defensive tackle back. I'm blanking on his name, but um, he opted out for the season. Anyways, that's going to be the next biggest thing. And after this first pick, I would say the rest of the draft, primarily I'm going to be looking at defensive pieces, defensive line, edge, corner is a massive need, probably even bigger than offensive guard, but just based on where we are with Caleb Farley already off. And the Vikings, by the way, are furious that Caleb Farley went off right beforehand. But um, I think given this, and I guess somebody else reaches just shortly after this pick, but given this, I'm okay with it. Trey Smith is a very, very good value, even better than Caleb Farley. So that's what it is. With the 19th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Paulson Adebo, cornerback, Stanford. So obviously the Colts are, are not afraid to reach. But but it does make sense, right? The Vikings needed an offensive guard, and they got one. The Colts now, they don't need quite as much stuff. They certainly, well, I guess they could take a guard over Glowinski or whatever. But this is another situation where I'm looking at a team that's just pretty stacked across the board. This is arguably the best offensive line in football. I think Phillip Rivers is a good quarterback that's going to be able to get us where we need to go. If if there was a quarterback available, I might have considered it, but at this point, I'm good with it. Let's roll with it. You know, the running back situation is fantastic. Um, Wide receiver, I think, is, is 
very possibly in a good spot. We'll see. Um, defensive line I like, linebackers I like, safeties I like. There's potential here at corner. But again, I want to harken back to what I said before. When you're going out and getting a guy like Xavier Rhodes, who is probably going to be starting, by the way, at least in you know when you got three cornerback outs, cornerbacks out there, I think you're going to have Rocky you Sin, you're going to have more in the slot, and then Xavier Rhodes is going to be out there. Xavier Rhodes is terrible. So this is a great opportunity to take a, a great roster and really elevate it to where we have Rocky Sin, who is hopefully going to get better, and Moore, who is hopefully going to stay at the level he was last year, which I don't know. I tend to think he's going to regress. He's an undrafted free agent. Man, my nose is just out of control. Moore, I think, is very possibly going to regress. He was an undrafted free agent who had two kind of mediocre years that really kind of exploded last year. Um, so I, I kind of tend to think he's going to regress back to being kind of average. So you might have Rocky Sin, who's average, Moore, who's average, and then Xavier Rhodes, which is just a terrible situation. So I do think corner makes a good amount of sense in this spot to get that one elite player, hopefully get that good compliment with Rocky Sin and Moore, and just have a, you know, again, now we're looking at a roster where I'm saying, I don't know where to go. And that's a good problem to have. With the 20th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. With this, I'm, I'm looking almost entirely at defense, and I think there's a lot of, if we went corner, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world. If we went defensive line, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Edge, linebacker, even safety, I think is doable. Any one position could fill a void somewhere, but best available player, uh, most important position along the defense matchup to where Basham makes the most sense here. Um, I'm not buying the Beasley-Landry combo. I don't know if Titans fans necessarily are. In fact, Titans fans are really, really hyped up about possibly getting Jadavian Clowney. That's still sitting out there as much as it seemed like a done deal. Um, I'm not so sure it's going to happen. But even if it does, what would be more awesome than having Basham and having... Um, I just, brain is gone. The guy I just said two seconds ago. Clowny. Clown. I'm a clown. This whole show is a clown. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Pat Fryermuth, tight end, Penn State. Usually, when I pick Pat Fryermuth, the argument isn't we don't need tight end. It's I don't like Pat Fryermuth. So... I actually do believe, and I've found the draft community is actually pretty intelligent. Because I've, I've seen several times over the years doing this when people say, that's ridiculous, he's not going to be there. And it's like, dude, come on, man. These guys know what they're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. And then you see that guy sort of drift, 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 and people start to move up, and it just happens. So I wouldn't be surprised if Friar Muth is not the top tight end. Although, probably not going to be as much moving around um, without you know a season and whatnot but um again i i don't usually get a lot of pushback on the pick itself so i am curious whether you like pat fryermuth or not what do you think about the bills taking a tight end obviously i shouldn't say obviously i think it's a need there are other positions we could go i don't really have offensive line to help you with you went out and got Stephon Diggs, so I don't want to get you a wide receiver. I do want to help out the offense a little bit, although I don't think the defense is perfect. I get the impression the general feeling is the defense is solid. The offense needs to be a little bit better. I also was considering running back, but I get the feeling you guys like Singletary a lot, so I could be wrong about that. It's another thing you could fill me in on. Buffalo Bills fans take on uh, Mr. Devin Singletary. I don't think that would be the worst thing in the world. Maybe not in the first round, but just in general. What do you think about the guy? But I do think a, a big help. We got Diggs and Brown again. We got the, the fast, speedy, outside guys. Something to kind of help attack the middle of the field, getting a, a, a tall, big, fast, talented tight end. I think it would be a big benefit for this team. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of unsure what it is you guys want. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets via the Seattle Seahawks select... Robert Rochelle, cornerback, Central Arkansas. <laughs> so Rochelle is new to the channel. Welcome to the channel, Mr. Robert Rochelle. Again, we're looking more for need, and we're fine reaching a little bit. We just want to kind of explore the positions of need and also maybe pull in some guys like Mr. Robert Rochelle that we haven't seen before, but a talented, right now seemingly a more second-round cornerback type of guy. But as far as the Jets, 
no question about it. Earlier on, we went Jamar Chase. Um, kind of a controversial kind of thing. Did we go Jamar Chase? We did go Jamar Chase. Okay. Anyways. Um, <laughs> kind of a controversial thing in terms of whether or not we need wide receivers. Again, talk amongst yourselves. But I don't think it's debatable that you need cornerbacks. Pierre Desir and, and Mallette and those guys, um, we need some help there. So... I'm going to go ahead and reach. I mean, we could reach for a couple different things, but I'm going to go ahead and get us a cornerback. It is a massive, important thing, especially after we lose a safety. Our DB uh, group has, has regressed quite a bit. And so um, given what it is we need and who's available, because I don't want to reach mid-second or third round or anything kind of stupid like that, but um, a talented early second, late first round prospect at a massive position to need and a very important position at corner, that's what we're going to go for. With the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Hamsa Nasrul Dean, safety, Florida State. So I, I experimented a little bit, got you guys a running back, thought you would appreciate it and get all excited about this elite offense. I was wrong. I misread the room. <laughs> um, but if I look at, for example, uh, Lil Ducky, he laid out a bunch of options for the Eagles, linebacker, wide receiver, safety, offensive line. Um, linebacker and as I'm looking at it I think safety actually does make a lot of sense and it hasn't really fallen that way um, for the Eagles in terms of the mock draft you know plus if I go out and get a corner people are gonna say Roby Coleman and we got Slay and we don't need that or you know we don't need this we don't need this there's no linebackers available I think safety is one of those things I doubt could be wrong I doubt Eagles fans are super excited about the safeties let me know if I'm lying about that but I really think that's a safe bet insofar as it's a big need. And if we can upgrade it, it's going to do huge things for this team and for this defense. And I don't think there's a real big love for guys like Mills. I'm just assuming. I don't know. But um, we're going to go Hamza, Nasrul Dean. I think it's going to be a massive help for this defense. I think uh, I really think Eagles fans are going to like it. I really hope so because I don't think I've made a pick you guys have liked very much so far so let me know with the 24th pick in the 2021 nfl draft the green bay packers select rashad bateman wide receiver minnesota the only thing i don't like about the pick is that it's boring everybody has the packers taking rashad bateman somewhere in the early 20 early to mid 20s and um that's just sort of the pick but no question this is a massive need and i can tell with 100% certainty that Packer fans are going to like the pick. The only Packer fans that won't are going to say no offensive line is more important, and that might be true. But I think given the situation and just looking at how difficult things are, right? We can make it work with the way things are, but how difficult it is to just have Devontae and how much we have to rely on scheme and rely on the run game and just how much it would open things up to really just get a solid, legitimate number two. We'll see what Fungus can do in 2021, but to be able to have a guy, and also we have to look at the, the prospect of the fact that Devontae maybe gets one more contract. It'll be a two, three year, but he's, he's like 28-ish, and by the time he's 30, 31-ish, we got nobody, and if, if we allow that to go that direction, that's going to be real ugly to where Rodgers is gone, Devontae is gone, Bakhtiari is gone. Horrifying. So we also have not only helping Rodgers to get us that next Super Bowl, but also the prospect of what does the team look like in, in three years, four years? Jordan Love and what? <laughs> so we got to start building that out a little bit as well. With the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jason Owe, edge rusher, Penn State. This one was a little bit tricky, but again, depending on where we are dictates what I do. And with Brady, we got pretty far, not as far as we like, but how do we take this to the next level? What are we going to do? We got Brady. We've got a solid offensive line. We got Evans and Godwin. Um, we've got Gronk, presumably still going to be pretty solid. I know we already have Shaquille Barrett, and that's probably going to be the biggest objection, but as I look at it, I like the linebackers. I think we got decent safeties with potential. We've got a lot of potential at corner, a lot of really young guys that have either started off really hot or have taken steps, like uh, uh, Davis, I think, in his second year had a really solid year. Sean Murphy Bunting had a good first year. Dean had a solid year. 
Um, what can we do to really elevate this? And I think getting that complimentary pass rusher on the opposite side of Barrett, not because we don't have it, but because we do have it. Now we got two. And I don't know who sticks around between Vita Vea and, and, and Dominic and Sue and all these guys along the interior. And maybe that's something to consider is finding some additional help along the interior. But um, no disrespect to Jason Pierre-Paul getting a younger talented pass rusher to compliment Shaquille Barrett to really just round out this this not just defense but this team that can attack you in so many different ways and there's so many things you have to be scared of right having a guy like Devin White at linebacker is such a versatile piece um you know Brady with these elite weapons at wide receiver it's just it's a scary team that just got in my estimation a lot scarier with the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Caden Stearns, safety, Texas. This is a pick I've been wanting to make for a long time, is getting a safety to the Cowboys. I can just feel Cowboys fans really wanting a safety. I understand the need very much so. I know you got ha-ha. I think it's a one-year contract, though. The, the Cowboys have been desperate to find a safety to come in and help. And, and again, you, you got the free agent that you've been trying to get, but let's try to get that more long-term solid option at safety. And um, again, the value isn't isn't great, but it's not terrible. We're reaching, but only a little bit. He's kind of an end of the first round type of guy anyways. We are at the end of the first round. So I'm, I'm very comfortable just pulling the trigger here. With the 27th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, Purdue. So very talented guy that has fallen. Similar to what I've been saying about the Buccaneers is where are the Patriots drafting? And when you're this close to a Super Bowl, seems like you did a pretty good job with Cam. So I'm, I'm again, how do we help out this team? I like the offensive line. Cam Newton obviously is the right piece. Um, the defense has been somewhat decimated as far as guys leaving. So that's a consideration here. Um, but I also really want to make sure we get some weapons for Cam. I don't know that he necessarily has that. He's got Julian Edelman, who, let's see, he's right now 34 years old. I mean, it's 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 a pretty straightforward pick for me, especially, I mean, if we're picking early, it didn't work with Cam, we need a quarterback. But at this point, Cam's the guy, and, and we're this close to just continuing what we've always done, but we got to get the guy some weapons, right? Seems obvious to me. With the 28th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Najee Harris, running back, Alabama. So I'm trying not to upset anybody, but Giuliano Pedroso, who I mentioned before in my last mock, um, mentioned that he thinks that running back isn't a terrible pick, but it'll be Najee Harris, not Travis Etienne. He, he messaged me again, I insist, he says, I insist Najee Harris will be the first pick of the Steelers. Tomlin loves horse running backs, and I think Devonta Smith or Tamori and Terry or other wide receivers will be the first pick for the Packers. I didn't need to read that part, I guess. I thought he was still talking about the Steelers, but he insists. So um, Steelers fans, I wanted to make you happy, and I hope I did. Um, if you're not, Giuliano, you let me down, my man. So anyways, let me know what you think. I don't, I, again, I don't disagree. I had you guys taking a running back before. That's where the comment came from. And this guy is just an absolute freak. And I'm excited, actually, that we get him in these mocks because I have not had him in a mock yet. So very excited to get him in here. And the Steelers, who are a very, very talented football team, and I think are going to surprise a lot of people. I would actually be surprised if they're not in the playoffs this year. Um, getting an absolute workhorse freak of a running back. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Israel Makuamu, cornerback, South Carolina. This one was was pretty tough. Um, I didn't want to go offense. I didn't want to pick a quarterback because, I mean, we've, we've got guys in the wings, and I just don't really trust that we're going to find the quarterback of the future here. Offensive line is great. Wide receivers are great. I'm looking at defense, and with Davenport and Jordan – great duo by the way we could look at defensive tackle but I didn't really see anybody that I liked linebacker I didn't think would be a thing so I'm, I'm looking at the fact that we've got guys like Janoris Jenkins and Malcolm Jenkins both on the team both in their 30s and I just felt like getting a younger compliment to Marshawn Lattimore just felt like the right thing to do not that it's a bad position group necessarily but I don't know what else to do in this spot 
I really don't. And, I, and again, I'd get you a defensive tackle if I thought there was one that was a good value. I'd get you a quarterback if I thought it was the guy of the future. I'd get you a guard if, if I thought that that was going to be an, an available piece. But I just I feel like this is probably, given the situation, the best thing we can do. And there's nothing wrong with getting another top-tier cornerback to pair up with Marshawn Lattimore as the Jenkins, both of them, are going to be on their way out very, very shortly. With the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Patrick Jones, edge rusher, Pittsburgh. Um, it really just came down to what can I do to help this team on the defensive side of the ball the most. Now, I've, I've talked a lot about getting wide receivers, and that's clearly an option, but I, th I feel like there's a little bit of pushback. Um, you've got the tight ends who are a massive help, and you don't need as much help at wide receiver when you've got such good tight ends and you've got one of the best arguably the best that's that's a ridiculous thing to say but he pff had him as the second best tight end in football um in andrews i think boyle is also a solid guy but then you got hollywood on top of that and you've got solid running back options so you you've got a great group to the point where maybe wide receiver two isn't as important i still think it's important but getting away from that what can i do to help and, and i'm looking at a group up front where, you know, Bowser maybe took a little bit of a step and you can kind of get excited about that. But Calais Campbell is the one elite player on this defense. And the guy's going to be 35 years old after this draft, the draft we're doing right now. We're talking about a 35-year-old Calais Campbell, assuming he's even on the team at this point. So I want to get better. Um, we've lost guys like Zadarius and some other guys um, that could have helped us and you know, we do a fantastic job of drafting, especially drafting along the defense and getting those kinds of pieces. So I trust our ability to go out and find a guy to just be a compliment. And, and you know, I mean, it's a, it's a good team, and they're going to be good for a really long time. We want to stay young. We want to stay healthy. We want to stay just getting after it. And uh, this is just going to be a guy that's going to come in, and he's going to make sure that we're still in tip-top shape. The defense is still clicking on all cylinders. It's a tough defense. The offense is still clicking. We just got to keep this thing going so that we get that sort of dynasty level thing going on. And I really think we can do that, but we, we, we got to get a little bit better, um, especially once Calais Campbell goes. That could become a problem. With the 31st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Andre Sisco Safety Syracuse. Again, one of the benefits of being able to do this, we can reach a little bit. And and second round, early second round, there's a lot of safety sitting there and a lot of teams that could really use it. It's kind of a easy way out for me because if I'm not doing this, I have to make some hard decisions and things that 49ers fans are not going to like. But I think safety is a relatively easy pick to make in terms of, I forget the team I just said, the Eagles, right? In terms of you got guys that could maybe function there, but I don't think anyone's going to be upset about getting somebody that's going to be an upgrade trying so hard not to sneeze right now <laughs> it's going to be an upgrade for this 49ers team and and again the offense and defense is just so dominant everybody you add that's an upgrade is just going to be you know even if we say we really like jimmy ward who had a pretty solid year last year despite being kind of iffy beyond that okay we really like jimmy ward well can we bring him in there in place of jaquiski tart who's you know again at this point he's going to be 29 years old he's never really been that elite of a player and then you just add it in with sherman and bosa and armstead and just this this dominant defensive group that we have with now Kinlaw and not offense Garoppolo and Kittle and Debo and McGlinchey and Williams and right it's a fantastic football team that's going to continue to be fantastic and we just made it more fantastic -er. finally my favorite part of the day with the 32nd pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Kansas City Chiefs select Nick Bolton linebacker Missouri pick is relatively straightforward you could say that there are bigger needs that could be addressed um, I'm kind of mixing up I mean if you just look at the top guys available wide receiver running back tight end offensive tackle offensive tackle defensive tackle Jalen Twyman tight end quarterback running back quarterback safety tackle I mean it's it's almost all offense with a couple pieces and I'm not so sure about but I really really don't like the linebackers I really really don't think you like the linebackers so we've got a guy that's a little bit of a reach um still kind of early-ish second middle-ish second type of guy um but we we need a lot of help at linebacker so we're going to take a swing with the 32nd pick and get get Nick Bolton out of Missouri all right guys that's it we did it 
It's mock draft number six. We'll be doing another one next week. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Green Bay Packers fans, be sure to check out the this thing right here, the Packernet podcast. You can find it right around here. Um, otherwise, hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification so you don't miss another one. And again, once we get to 2,000 subscribers, you're going to be sending in that pick, and I'm real excited about doing that episode. I'm going to have, I think, a special guest in here to kind of make it kind of real, you know, where we react to your pick, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, in order to do that, also make sure you get involved in the uh, the group, the Facebook group. The link is down below. That way you'll, uh, when I ask for your assistance, you'll be able to do that. So anyways, that's it. Have a good one. Check it out next time. Whatever. Bye.